students. So I'm just going to make a few opening remarks before we start this really exciting session. So good afternoon, everyone, and bon appetit to those. Okay, so maybe a housekeeping rules first. Please um, mute yourself. And I think you all know this already. This is our 19th talk. Uh, mute yourself and turn off your camera if you're not speaking. And, um, yeah, and uh, I can, yeah, okay, good. I think that person's muted as well. So I'm going to start again. If you're not speaking, please turn off turn your off camera, camera and you can turn on the camera when you speak. So that's good. So good afternoon, everyone, and bon appetit to those who are having the sandwich while watching this. This is exactly why we have our lunch, our talks at lunchtime so that you can have a brainy and inspiring lunch. So also a big hello to all those uh, community folks that we met at Web Summit last week. It was really great catching up. And it's also great not to have 71,000 people around you. So um, just as a teaser, Unleash will be organizing smaller in-person pet care community events next year. So look out for it in our Slack group. Again, if you're not speaking, please mute. Um, also, I think uh, Sue and uh, Jean, if you're around, please uh, help to mute people if they've forgotten to mute themselves. Please yes, don't mute do. our panelists. <laughs> Um, an announcement, you all must know that Unleashed, uh, the, the Unleashed Accelerator program is recruiting for our fourth cohort. Uh, we have accelerated 18 amazing startups in the last three years in Europe, Middle East, North Africa. And for our fourth cohort, we are welcoming Australia, New Zealand and Japan. I'll talk about this later. Long story. Um, call me up if you want to know why. But we are very excited. We have had testimonials uh, from our startups, but please go ahead and connect with any of them to ask them directly uh, to share their experience for their, you know, and, and for more information from them. Please visit our website, unleashedbypurina.com, for the application and for more information. So applications close on the 30th of November. So if you're interested, uh, please start your applications soon. All right. Now for this Unleashed talk, let's talk about pet insure tech. This topic is wildly popular. We sold about 140 tickets. Well, unfortunately, our selling price is zero, but it's just amazing how many tickets we sold uh, for this event. Um, I think it may have something to do with the panelists and their success in their respective areas of play. So let's see. I'm, I'm so excited to hear from them and how they've disrupted pet insurance. You know, I grew up with six dogs and I've never heard of my parents' generation ever even thinking that it was possible to buy insurance for our dogs. Thinking just about the unleashed regions uh, that I just talked about, we have 140 million cats and 120 million dogs. So even if you're talking about a 10% insurance, that is hell of a lot. So another thing that I want to say is that when I think of insurance, I think of a stuffy sales agent, you know, in a suit selling, trying to try, trying to sell me all sorts of insurance. And then I reluctantly buy out of fear more than anything else. I get the policy, I put it in my drawer and I hope and I pray that I will never, ever need to see it for the rest of its life. And certainly my greatest nightmare would be having to contact the insurance company who would then take ages to come back to me, if at all, and then oppose everything that I'm claiming for. So, yeah, definitely I've not had a fantastic relationship with any of my insurers. But things have changed and here we have here now. Hedda from Lassie, Sweden, Ludovic from Napo, UK, and Alban from Dalma, France, to help us understand what all this fuss is about and why everybody wants to hear about pet insurance and why investors are pouring money into this area. So um, Alban, please put your camera on. You, you are part of the panelists, so even if you're not speaking, we need you. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I would like to invite you all to start by telling us your, you know, your founder stories. I think nowadays everybody wants to hear why you got into this. So Heather, would you like to start? Yes, of course. Hi, I'm Heather Bover Olson and I'm the CEO and one of the founders of Lassie. And the reason why I got into pet insurance was just what you explained, Kim, that we didn't want to be a company that you didn't want to use and that you were kind of hating to use. So we come from the whole angle of preventive care. My mom is a veterinary, so I saw firsthand the effects of working preventively with your pets and how much injuries and sicknesses you can actually reduce by working preventively. So we want to be your health companion and help you along the way. Of course, we want to help you and make it super simple for you when you have a claim, but also we want to be there for you at every day of your life and help you avoid the injury. So I had this idea, um, COVID had just started and I knew that I had to act fast. And uh, I got in contact with Sophie Wilkinson, who has a background as uh, head of pet insurance at, in Sweden, and also Johan Jönsson, who's been involved in InsurTech and also just got a puppy. So we felt like we were a perfect trio to solve this situation. Previously, I had worked uh, as management consultant and on the other side, on the investment side. So I felt like I was really missing getting more operational and work closer to work with people and not just uh, PowerPoints, Excel slides, actually making a difference. A super vet mom, huh, Edda? <laughs> Great, thanks for the story. And Ludo, would you like to talk a little bit about? Yeah, sure. Uh, nice to meet you. Hi, everyone. Um, so the story of uh, my co-founder, JP, and I is, so we are entrepreneurs. We are good friends, first of all. We, we've known each other 15 years. Uh, we worked together before in a company called TickTrack, and TickTrack was, you know, trying to help people take better care of themselves. So it was human health. Um, we continued, we worked there for about four years, working with, with insurers, selling prevention platforms to insurers. Then my co-founder, JP, went to Babylon Health, which is uh, online doctor consultations. I went to Facebook for, for a few years and we stayed in touch and we kept an eye out for like interesting opportunities. We, we're both animal lovers. Uh, I have a cat, I grew up with dogs. JP had dogs growing up and cats as well. And we started hearing about um, people being unhappy with pet insurance and there being an opportunity in the UK for a better product. And, and the way this came out is, you know, people telling you like, oh, pet insurance could be great, but it's not really done properly today, or it's not really a product that I can trust, or there's no solution out there that is, you know, modern enough or that meets my actual needs. And so that was, that was the starting point. For, for, for our research, um, in, a, in a similar way, we came to similar conclusions to, to Lassie, which is, okay, if we want to be competitive in this space, you need to look at two things. First, you need to look at offering a product that's fit for purpose, so that actually solves the core need, which is having your back. Uh, so Napo was really, the starting point was really looking into uh, how to make the policies the most comprehensive possible. And then the second part was, uh, was around prevention. So it's kind of overwhelming to be a dog owner, a cat owner, especially in the first few years, Lots of stuff is happening, so we 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 identified very clearly that very early that we could clearly create value there by supporting pet owners, pet parents in their journey, helping them make better decisions, and and eventually helping the pet live healthier and happier and longer lives. Good, good. We'll go um, much more into what you are doing. Um, yeah, it sounds as though you guys are not insurance people at all. So I'm going to be really really excited to find out exactly what you actually do. So Dama, what about your what about your founder story? Yes, thanks Kim for uh, having me. Hi everyone. So very quickly on my end, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Dama. I launched uh, that company a year and a half ago with two co-founders, uh, Raphael, that I worked with at least four or five years in a totally different industry because we were working in the uh, food delivery industry, and then we met Ari with that insure tech background. Uh, is our CTO. And basically, we decided to launch the company for two main reasons, I would say. One, we feel super connected to that mission because we have different story with pets, basically. So I basically grew up in the countryside with like, just like you, Kim, like with many dogs, many cats. I had a donkey when I was a kid. So basically living pretty much in a farm uh, in the northern part of France. Raphael is the proud dad of an amazing Vienna dog called Elio. So if you guys, if you don't follow us on Instagram and on TikTok, you should definitely do it because we are producing, you know, content 
are pretty cool with uh, with the LEO. And and the funny thing about Harry is actually he's afraid of dogs because it was attacked when he was a kid, you know. So we had different story with pets. And at the same time, we saw an amazing opportunity, basically, because we are super ambitious entrepreneurs, right? In France and in Europe as well. So basically, as you may know, going to the vet clinic is getting more and more um, expensive. And at the same time, when you look at, let's say, old school competitors, we saw an amazing opportunity to reinvent the experience. And that's why we launched uh, Dharma, I would say. Amazing. My mom wouldn't give me a donkey. I don't think I could have had a donkey. I did have for a while um, some fish, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know how much ins insurance you keep for fish, but you know, uh, in Asia, I think fish are really quite, yeah, they're, they're quite uh, precious, I would say. So you, you guys all work in different areas. So I'd like to really understand a little bit about, um, you know, when you found your startup, where you operate really uh, and i know that you know uh, for example in the nordics the um, penetration rate of start of insurance is really really high whereas i think in france it's really pretty low and uk is somewhere in the middle so i'd really like to hear a little bit more about you know uh, about about your startup and the area you operate ludo would you like to start yeah sure um so as you mentioned the uk is uh is a more mature market than the rest of Europe with the exception of, of Sweden and maybe Germany. We have roughly 30% uh, pet insurance penetration, much higher in dogs than cats. I think dogs around 50%. Uh, it's, it's a mature market. It's been, uh, pet insurance has been around for, I think, almost 50 years. Uh, I think Pet Plan launched in the 70s or the, or the 60s. Um, it's a market that's very interesting because it's dominated by um, aggregators. So pet insurance is traditionally sold on aggregator websites. So you can, you know, you come in, you enter your pet details, you get a quote, and uh, and then you get actually a hundred quotes from a hundred different providers and a hundred different products, and lots of you know jargon you've never seen before, and lots of financial information. You're 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 really overwhelmed by it. So uh, it's an interesting market. I mean, in terms of pet lovers, uh, I think it's 22 or 24 million uh, uh, pets uh, in the UK. So quite a big market, growing uh, growing pretty quickly. And in terms of um, of, of competitive landscape, you have you have a few uh, older insurer like Petland that have been in the market for many years uh, that have done a great job bringing insurance to the market. You have a few up and coming uh, companies that have you know uh, over the last five to ten years tried to disrupt a little bit the distribution of it and move more to a, a digital model like you like you discussed. People don't 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 really want to be called anymore to be sold insurance. They want to self serve. Uh, and then you have a long tail list of smaller uh, insurers that are just that have been in the market for anywhere between 15 and, and five years that are very small market shares. Interesting. And what is the penetration rate of insurance in the UK? It's 30%. 30%? Hmm. Yeah. That's good. And what about what about Heda? What about you in Sweden? Do you offer yeah. insurance in Sweden? Yes, so we launched in 2021, uh, late summer in Sweden. We have cats and dogs insurance um, as well. And uh, we uh, launched in Sweden because that's really the birthplace of pet insurance. It's, as you mentioned, the country with the highest rate of pet insurance. And I think that's why we've seen pets as a family member for a really long time. So for dogs, it's around 90% penetrations and for cats, it's around 60%. And we see that since Sweden is the kind of role model for pet insurance, we see that all countries move towards the direction of Sweden when they do become more mature. So our whole reasoning was to first crack the most difficult market, have that as a playbook and then go into other markets. Amazing. 90% for dogs and 60% for cats. That's Those are dream numbers for many of the other countries. Maybe for you, Alban, are those dream numbers for you? <laughs> yes, exactly. And to be honest, I'd love to, to see the same penetration in France, actually. But the good news, so when it comes to figures, so the actual penetration in France is around 10%. But the good news is that you know it's catching up very quickly uh, with let's say more mature uh, countries like the UK or Sweden. So basically we we think when we analyze the market, we are reproducing pretty much, replicating pretty much what happened in, in the Nordics or in the UK with a 10 year difference, I would say. You know, the, the vet clinic markets 
for instance, in, 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 in the French market was super fragmented. It's being co consolidated at the moment with you know, big bad chains coming from these particular countries. These guys, they are investing a lot in their equipment, in their experience, and as a consequence, you've, we, we see big inflation when it comes to vet care uh, in France. And when you put, let's say, inflation on vet care, plus lots of new animals that were adopted, especially since COVID times, you've got the perfect match to make that market grow at the rapid pace. And this is what we see on the French market right now. Very interesting. So lots of room to grow. So it can only go up, right? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, so like I've said, none of you actually look anything like my insurance agents or relationship managers or whatever they call them. So tell 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 me how are you different? How how you know what do you sell actually? So what's what is your core business? <laughs> If you know what I mean. So really, I'd like to understand how you're different from traditional insurance agencies. Uh, Heather, would you like to start? Yeah, of course. What we uh, at Lassie do differently, as I mentioned before, we have a preventive angle to our insurance. So we have created what we think is the best and comprehensive terms and conditions. But on top of that, we have an app where we attack the problem at the root cause because we think most of the problem is because there are so many unnecessary problems and injuries and many think it's too expensive to get pet insurance. So we offer in our app customized and personalized content for how to take care of your pet um, and we reward you with a better price if you do our courses and challenges because we see that there's a lower risk of injuries if you can avoid some of these injuries. I mentioned that I had a mom that's a veterinary, so this is based on expert input from veterinarians and dog trainers on how to avoid injuries. So we can offer better price pet insurance since we help them prevent injuries and based you know, on my experience and research, we know that 40% of all vet bills can be prevented if you take the right care. So we offer great uh, uh, and comprehensive coverage. But on top of that, we also give free access to our app where users get access uh, to these courses and challenges. And it's really a triple win because the users get a better price, a healthier pets and less vet visits. And we get better profitability, which we can get give back to the customer. But we also get more engaged customer. We keep in contact with them you know, every week, every month, not only when it's time for renewal, when there's the claims. Wow, that's nice. That sounds really good. And uh, Ludo, do you have an app as well? No, we don't have an app. Um, and I can tell you why we don't have an app. But um, in terms of like the, the, the value prop, how we, how, how we got to where we are today, there, there's, so the mission is to get more pets covered, right? It's to, to save pets' lives, to improve pets' lives. And uh, and when we looked at the market and tried to understand, okay, why are 70% of people in the UK not buying insurance? There were two main reasons. One of them was we don't really trust insurers. And the other one was it's it's not enough value for money. I have other stuff I need, I need to spend my money on. And the first one, and I think it's kind of important to talk about the, 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 the value of insurance before we get into prevention, the first one is we really wanted to, to build a, a brand that people can trust, to have their back, to build complete peace of mind. Too often we hear from people, pet insurance is one more thing to worry about. I don't know if they're gonna pay. So that's why it was super important for us to have like one of the most comprehensive policies we could get in the market and a product that truly has people people's back and high levels of cover because as Alban has mentioned, Prices have been increasing in the UK. They're going to increase everywhere in Europe. And so we need to cover what's required to take the best care of your pet. Um, so that, that was the first, that's the first pillar, right? Like super comprehensive insurance. You need to get your operating right. You need to pay claims quickly. You need to, you need to stay on top of that. The second part is, and as Heather mentioned, is there's not enough value. Uh, the people were telling us insurance is not enough value for money. They have other stuff that they spend money on. And so that's where we started realizing, okay, there's a ton of value that can be created by helping people take better care of their pets. And, uh, please mute uh, anybody who is yeah. not mute. Please mute. If you're not speaking, please switch off your camera. Thank you. I'll carry on. Um, and so for an example of what we're doing there is, is the Puppy Academy. So we launched recently uh, the Puppy Academy in partnership with First Vet. Uh, who have seen some people on this call. Uh, and the Puppy Academy is live video sessions that you can take for free on an Apple website. 
uh, you join, you have a puppy under a certain age, you're eligible for the Puppy Academy. Those are live classes with real vets and behaviorists and are designed to help you, you know, in the first few weeks, in the first few months, in the first couple of years, we'll be expanding it soon to the first two years of the life of the vet. And so the angle here is similar to what Heda was mentioning. We have the same stats, 40% uh, of accidents and illnesses are preventable. We, have, uh, we are a new insurer in the market. We have a lot of puppies on our book and there's a unique opportunity there to create value, right? To help that pet have a long and healthy life by educating the owner and setting the right habits from day one. So that's, that's one angle. Another thing that we're doing is looking into pet obesity. 55% of pets are, are overweight in the UK. Uh, so we wanna try to drive awareness there. So reaching out to our members, identifying clusters of risk, uh, and I know I'm getting ahead to the to the data question, but like really personalizing the intervention to the needs of that particular pet owner. Right. So a different, uh, very different angle to it. You don't need an app. You've got your puppy academy. You've got first vet that is partnering with you uh, for immediate information and so on. And then obesity prevention programs sounds really good. What about you, Alban? So what, what, do, what do you guys do? Yes. So we do have uh, a mobile app. So basically, as a pet parent, you can have access of, let's say, two main features. Feature number one is, let's say, an insurance feature, right? So basically, every time you're going to go to the vet, you're going to get refunded for any vet fees that you have very easily. And very easily means that every time you go to the vet clinic, you take your mobile app, you take a photo of your vet invoice, and in minutes, you're going to get you know, confirmation from our team that this will be refunded. And in two days max, you're going to get your cash um, in your bank account. And we do it with full transparency. And this is super important to highlight this one because, you know, many of, you know, old school competitors, you know, they are, they, they put in the coverage in the guarantees, what we call deductibles or management fees or application fees, etc. And we've decided to erase all of this at Delma. So basically, when you opt, when you go for 100% um, coverage, out of 100 euro vet bill, you're gonna receive, let's say in two days, max 100 euro in your bank account. At the same time, in terms of insurance coverage, we, do, we go way beyond than the industry, uh, let's say average, because we do offer what we call accident and illness coverage, and we do have an angle on preventative care as well. So basically, if you need, you know, refunds on your vaccines, supplements, dental, et cetera, you can get refunded until um, 200 euros per year. And the third, and let's say the last, the main differentiator that we have versus the old school players is that we go way beyond insurance directly into our product. And that's the second feature that we offer for free to our customers is the ability to have a chat or a video call with vets uh, with a fully integrated experience. So let's imagine, Kim, that you have a dog and you get back from home, I would say, and you realize that your, your pet, for instance, has not eaten properly uh, its food. If you have any doubt, any question, if you want to talk with the licensed vet, then in one minute max, you have the ability to do so. Uh, this is 24 seven and, and uh, uh, included for free for uh, all of our uh, community members. Very good, very good. Wow, it sounds as though you guys are sponsoring the your clients instead of them paying you for all these services. It's be very interesting how you make money out of your insurance. So, do you use what kind of modern technology and what kind? How do you use data to actually make all this work? Um, that's uh, Alba. Maybe you want to start? Yes, maybe on modern technology and data, we've got let's say two main focus at Dama at the moment. We think that at the end of the day, you know, people would choose Delma because we deliver a much better experience than the other ones, right? And, and the thing that we see on the market, that we observe on the market, is that, you know, pet parents, they want their cash back as fast as we can. That's the main focus that they have, right? So we are building and investing a lot of tech at the moment to make sure that our, let's say, claim process can go from, let's say, two days max to instant. That's the main milestone that we have, because in the end, if we can manage to do so, right, we deliver a best in class experience. And at the same time, we make our business super efficient in terms of ops, right? So we are investing in what we call OCR technology at the moment. So we are doing a lot of tests and pilots to make sure that we can translate instantly a vet bill into actionable, actionable data. 
And we have a few uh, data scientists that we just hired in the team that are you know, working on the AI at the moment to make sure that once we've got that data, we can match it very easily to, let's say, our client's coverage to make sure that we can give a go or a no-go and give our client their money quite instantly. Let's say that's one of the main milestones that we have on the team right now. And the second, uh, I think, Eda, you, you, you spoke about you know, personalized content. That's one of the main milestones that we have because in the end, we want to build more engagement into our, into our app. And a good way of, let's say, creating more engagement and more stickiness to the app is to give our customer and our community actual uh, good tips. It could be video content, it could be uh, articles. And we are tracking, you know, the, uh, the main topics and the main focus that our customers have uh, with uh, when they are using the telehealth feature, basically. So that's an amazing source of data to make sure that then we can, you know, create uh, personalized content for our, our community. Very good use of data. Hey, Dan, what about you? How do you use technology and data? I know that you guys are very data savvy as well. Yeah, so I think we have uh, two main ways of working with uh, with this. And the first one is on the preventive angle that I've already been talking about quite a lot, is that we are um, see ourselves not only as a pet insurance company, but more of a pet health company. So we help our users with more than just pet insurance. And we have, as I mentioned, our personalized uh, content and personalized app. We, um, for us, we work together with third party first vet for, for giving access to online veterinaries that they can speak to on demand. And we also have our kind of customer success team opening um, between eight to 10 o'clock every evening. So we're making, um, we're collecting a lot of data. We're working a lot to prevent injuries. And by this, we become a lot better at pricing pet insurance. We get a lot better at pricing the risk. Um, and that's one innovation. For the second part, it's about kind of digitalizing uh, all the ways of working that you traditionally work with insurance. So making everything super smooth in the app, you can sign up, you can do a claim, just a photo of your seat. We can actually can pay out in just in minutes if we have approved the injury right now. So we're making the whole process digitalized um, so you can have an easy, transparent actions in the app. You can see, okay, we're waiting for the last uh, receipt from you, or now we're just waiting money. So make that whole process transparent so you know when you're getting your money back and what we think of the injury and what we need from you. Good. And Ludo, technology, yeah. AI, machine yeah. learning. Yeah, well, we are we are we are all technologists at Napo. We come from big tech companies, so uh, <laughs> but it is, there's a natural claim angle, right? So you, you want to automate your claim assessment as much as possible. There's always going to be humans involved in that process if you if you want to make sure you you assess them fairly. But yeah, like data and image recognition technology can help you get a long way there. So that's that's one big thing on our roadmap. Uh, the second aspect is really the personalization of the intervention. So like Heather was saying. Uh, we also integrate with First Vet for 24-7 vet consultation. We also have content on our blog. We have a podcast. We have the Puppy Academy. We have the Obesity Week. So we, we generate a lot of data with the engagement into these features. And, and so what's interesting is that that allows us to do further personalization. So, right, we know, like, your pet has had certain claims. You had to, uh, to talk to maybe a behaviorist or a, a vet about an emergency treatment. We get access to those clinical notes, and that allows us to analyze and refine our roadmap and then refine the recommendations we make to the user. So that's one big, uh, big, really part of our roadmap is driving further personalization of the preventative intervention and recommendations of the right tool. And the last thing that I think is super important is that what that, that will allow us to do in terms of pricing. So uh, in the long term, the hypothesis is healthier pets. You can lower the premium. You can they, they, they won't have to claim as much, right? And so now we start to be able to track because we do everything in house at Naples. So we do it from claims all the way to pricing. So we have access to the data end to end. Uh, we can start tracking cohorts based on like who has used a, tele a telehealth services, who has used uh, the Puppy Academy, and you can analyze the performance and the health of these pets uh, or in a more segmented and, um, and, and in a way that allows us to do pricing in a more refined way. Very good, very good. Everything is getting very, yeah, futuristic, actually. We already know what the future is going to be like, which is what, you know, insurance is supposed to do. So I'm going to uh, ask people to, you know, if you want to ask a question, I see that there's some questions in the chat. And if you want to ask a question, instead of writing it down, just raise your hand. We'll be happy to hear that too. 
Um, I see that some of the questions have been answered, but this was an interesting one. Napo and Lassie outsource Televet service to First Bet, while Dalma keeps Televet support in house. Can you please talk about your selection? Why did why did you choose to keep it in house or outsource it? So maybe uh, the one to keep it in house. Uh, oh, Michael, you're the person who asked the question. Good. Hi, hi, Michael. Go ahead, uh, hi. Dalma. Dalma, do you want to? Yes. Let Michael know. <laughs> I, I, I can I can go ahead if, if you want, and I'll, I'll 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 tell you why we've decided to build the technology in house. At the end of the day, let's say the vision that we have for Dalma is to go way beyond pet insurance, right? We think that pet insurance is chapter one, and then we we'll need to find ways of aggregating some other features directly into the app to generate more engagement in the short term. And let's say possibility of monetization in the long term, I would say. This is how we think of Dalma in the long-term journey, right? So let's say we think that building the technology in-house allows to create more engagement directly to the product. If we had you know, the possibility to partner with, let's say, a third party like First Bet, in the end, you know, your, your community, your members, they have to switch apps, basically. So we want to hold the whole customer experience to generate more engagement. And it might be a good opportunity tomorrow to add, let's say, monetization opportunities. Today, every day, you know, our vets, basically, they are recommending certain types of pet foods. They are recommending to our community to use supplements for, for the moment. So it might be a good, you know, innovation tomorrow to bring beyond that telehealth feature, what we call an e-commerce e page, and you could, as a Dalma client, basically in a few clicks and in two days maximum, buy and receive your pet food directly to your mailbox. And that's basically the, the vision that we have. So that's basically a closed system that you're thinking about, Aldan, whereas Ludo and Heather has got a more open system, which has got its, again, pros and cons. Maybe Ludo, Heather, why, why did you decide to um, to do it with first bet? Yeah. Um... I mean, uh, before engagement, we think first about value, right? Like the, the mission is to deliver value to pet owners. Uh, and when we started looking at the space, we had a similar similar concerns to Albans, which is okay, there's going to be friction, they're going to need to download another app. But we just tested this thing. At the end of the day, you want people to get access to what they need to take better care of their pet. And first vet offers a really good solution. Uh, the friction is not a problem because we get people to download the app up front. They have the first app on their phone. It's all ready for them. If they, if they need to go, we have very good integration so people can look straight from our dashboard using the first bed widget. So if you integrate well with the partner, I think the friction argument is, uh, is gone. And then, and then what that allows us to do is it allows us to build other stuff. Like as at the end of the day, we're all startups here. We don't have unlimited resource. We don't have unlimited engineering teams. We need to we need to, we, we need to to pick the right projects to work on. We need to build the stuff that's not being built. And so when you have a telehealth services or a vet services that's as good as first vet, that's readily available that you can integrate with really well, and that allows your engineering team to go and work and build a puppy academy which doesn't exist, uh, then that that becomes a no-brainer for us because now we can create a value that's already in market with 24/7 free vet consultation. Give that to our members, and no maintenance cost. And on the side, we can build a feature that no one else has built. Good. Yeah, and I think similarly, we, we discussed a similar topic that we want to offer a pet health companion. And our focus right now is, you know, we can't do everything ourselves and be the best at everything. So for us, we're focusing a lot on building that preventive angle, personalized content, automating the claims, building the app. And we want to offer telemedicine. And uh, should we offer it ourselves or is there a good partner that delivers great value? If you do everything yourself, you're going to spread too thin eventually. So it's also always a decision on is this best to insource or outsource? And, and for us, we're super happy right now to not so spread ourselves too thinly at this moment. So, Michael, do you want to voice over your next question? You've got a lot of questions. Maybe tell us where you're from. Yeah, I've got, I've tell got us where three. You're from, Michael, uh, and then maybe you can just yeah, ask your most definitely. pressing ones. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so we're Cooper Pet Care. We're out of the Netherlands and we're servicing uh, Benelux Market. And uh, yeah, so we're also in the pet healthcare space. We currently have um, AI products like uh, Symptom Checker, which allows you to understand uh, the symptoms very quickly. We also have a Televet solution um, in house. And let's be honest, we're also thinking about the uh, financing uh, solution. Thus, my question 
the following. Typically, when you talk to underwriters, they usually want you to either already have an MGA license or, you know, be close to that. But when you talk to regulators, they want you to have like an agreement with underwriter, so which creates a chicken and egg uh, type of problem. So how did you tackle that? Did you start with regulator or did you start with underwriter? For us, when we applied for a license in Sweden, there was no requirement to have a deal. We just needed to show that we had the capabilities to do this. So we show, we started with the regulators and then we already had the license when we started talking to the carriers. Yeah, we, we did it the other way around. We had the, the carrier agenda writer agreement first and then we got, uh, we got the regulatory stuff sorted with the contracts in place. And we pretty much, you know, had the same thing as EDA. So basically, uh, we just had to show the to show the regulatory uh, guys that we had the, you know, uh, the right skill set, I would say. And and you know, our CTO Ari basically worked within the insurance uh, insure tech scene for a, a couple of years, and that was a good argument, basically. And then you've got like let's say different. You you've got different strategies if you want to go for let's say. Pet insurance, either you operate as an MGA, either you go for the full stack model, then it's different strategies. On our end, we saw, you know, um, let's say a very good go to market, a time to market, I would say. The opportunity was, you know, opening up like two years ago and it's, it continues to open up. And obviously, if you go for the MGA model, then the time to market is, is super interesting. If you want to go for the full stack model, then you get to wait and, and raise a lot of of funding at the same time. Good, good. And Michael from Cooper Healthcare, you've also wanted to know about pricing. So, go ahead. Yeah, Mike. that's something that uh, that that Ludo said uh, with uh, current uh, penetration of aggregators. How important is the price? Uh, can you actually um, reasonably compete against the cheapest? Can you actually reasonably compete being not the cheapest? And if so, what is the reasonable premium you can charge versus the, the cheapest offering? Because they will, customers will at the end of the day, you know, check your offering versus uh, other offering in aggregators. And, you know, if you're three times more expensive, um, can you do that? that? That's my question. Yeah, and it's a question we get a lot, right? Uh, um, so the, the reality, and, and our research shows that, is that first of all, not every pet owner is the same. Right, and we really focus more on the, like the higher end of the spectrum, the indulgent pet owner that really wants to take the back care of their pet. So, but we haven't seen in research people just you know default to the cheapest. People are not looking for a cheap deal. They love their pet. They're a member of the family. They want to give them you know something they can afford that's high quality. So, first of all, the race to the bottom is not really worth going after because that's not even where the customers are. I think aggregators do prevent you from talking about like how you are different from others right like like value props like the people on this on this talk right we have like quite a quite a heavy uh, investment in prevention and creating value outside of insurance we, it's difficult for us to resonate on, on aggregator with this feature so that's where you need to you need to you need to build your brand that's where you need to build your direct acquisition channels um so that's what we've been working on for the past like nine months we launched 12 months ago and the past nine months has been really okay the aggregator stuff is sorted how do we develop like a direct acquisition channel strategy so that we can tell that story to to people and they make a decision that yeah it might be more expensive it's a more comprehensive product it has more things that that i need uh but this is the right fit for purpose product for me yeah, I agree. I think you first and foremost look at the coverage. You want to, we are the highest rated uh, pet insurance in Sweden, for example, both from consumers on Trustpilot, but also from an independent consumer agency. And we see that that gives us a huge benefit because people, it's, you know, their family members, of course, you want to give them the best coverage possible. But then, of course, if you compare uh, similar coverage, then, of course, I, I can't lie to you, price would make a difference if, but you are compared you can pay a premium price if you feel like you're getting a lot of value, of course. But I think it's also important to look at segmenting. You know, you have over 400 dog breeds and 200 cat breeds. You have different ages. You have different places where you live. You can really segment and work with data and decide what customer personas do we want to target and create your pricing model um, do that. Great. And we, we pretty much see the same thing in France. I think there's a, a market thing at the same time, 
when you look at the market like 10 years ago, especially in France, when the market was growing and it was only the beginning, you know, the main persona choosing bad insurance was, you know, basically a persona with, let's say, 35 to 40 years old with very low budget. Basically, that was the main persona. As we move, as the market is pushing in the right direction, you've got, let's say, I'm, I'm, I tend to agree with Ludo, basically. Pricing was super important in the criteria like 10 years ago. It's getting less and less, you know, important. It remains obviously important, but let's say people, they consider their pets, let's say, as kids, as family members, right? So they value quite a lot uh, your ability to deliver an amazing experience and to create value beyond insurance, you know, and that's pretty much the vision that we have at DAMA. So let's say we are pretty standard in terms of, of pricing. So, you know, the, the main leader in France is called Santévet. We are pretty much, we, we have pretty much the same pricing strategy, but for that same level of pricing, we put way more value into the product. And this is how we dif differentiate, basically. Very good. Thank you, Michael, for all your questions and good luck uh, for Cooper Healthcare. See you soon. Um, we've got a question from K Kiran. I think he's uh, it's interesting. He says that do any of you have a possibility to measure an owner's ability to provide good pet care and hence be a lower risk? Are you able to kind of spot good good parents, good pet parents? <laughs> do you mean at the sign up or or at after the, the I, I imagine it's at the sign up, yeah. I, I I'm gonna jump in because um, I, I think I think it's not really the goal. I, at least for Napo, it's not really the goal, right? The goal is to leverage opportunities to help people take better care of their pets. So I don't see our mission so much as like identifying who's a better pet owner or worse pet owner and adjust the price. It's more like give a fair price and then identify opportunities to help someone do a better job and give that to them. That's that's how we think about it. Uh, you get a lot of soft signals though, like to complete kind of the picture at the at the quote level, like like Heda mentioned, is pricing in, in pet insurance quite complex. You have like, you know, the breed, the age, the location, you have softer signals like is the is the pet microchip, is the pet uh, neutered. Uh, so we use these things as a feature in pricing, but never to infer whether you're doing a good job or not. We 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 much rather want to give you the tools to improve based on based on your needs. Yeah, and we also we created our pricing model to be um, standalone from when you get uh, active in our app. So we have a lot of data on on the things before that, but we don't want to uh, distinguish you. We want to create democratic prices before, and then you can work on doing preventive actions and get rewarded for them instead of punishing you before you're even a customer. And. Um... I just so you know at, at, at Dama, so we don't have you know at least when you when we look at the subscription we we cannot say whether or not you're a good a good pet parent right um, but at, we think that in the end if you choose Dalma we think that we've built you know the right experience and we've been offering to you the right you know experience to be a better good pet, uh, pet parent because in the end. Again, and that's why we've invested day one in your relationship with vets, basically, because it's unlimited, it's on demand. So if you have any question, any doubt, any concern, um, you have the possibility to have a chat with an expert, basically. And these guys, they, they can help you uh, make the right decisions, basically. But in terms of subscription, we have no, um, no elements on this. So Kieran, do you want to uh, voice, voice over a comment? Is your question? Please go ahead. Yes, I'd love to. Thank, thanks, Billy. Um, it, it's basically, uh, I have three um, caps I'm wearing at the moment. One is I'm actually living in France at the moment on a farm with three chickens, four cats, five horses and about eight dogs. So <laughs> I must say it's a crazy experience, but I'm, I'm also um, an insurance advisor and a dog trainer. And one of the things I look at, and you can see it in the post COVID pandemic is, it's too easy to get a dog and then it's too easy to abandon it. And when you look at the statistics, especially in the UK and in America, the dog trainers only have about 5% of the market and the insurance companies also insure a similar figure. And 
what I'm seeing with pet insurance companies is they're chasing, they're all chasing the same customers, the same people who can actually afford, who have a good background. Now, Sweden is the exception. No, no question about that. But I, I think until there's a completely different approach of making it not so easy to get a dog, then the insurance companies will always be bit players on the sideline fighting amongst themselves. And there's a massive opportunity here, um, both culturally and financially being missed. Um, quick comment on, on this, I, I, I fully agree. And especially if you live in France, when you look at, you know, the number of, of dogs and cats that were abandoned like every summer, I think we are worst in class in France. This is really, really a bad thing. When you look at the uh, when you look at the statistics and when you are you know convict, um, doing surveys, basically one third of, of these people that decide eventually to abandon either the cat or dog, sometimes they do it for uh, financial reasons, right? Because they face very high budgets, especially when it comes to health. So we think that, and and this is. This is why we think our mission is noble uh, right now at Dalmais. We think that we can help prevent that phenomenon, right? And I guess the second leverage that we should all work on is, is pushing the regulation in the right direction. We have in France at the moment, you know, big discussion around, you know, a potential um, license. Every yeah. time you go to, um, to, to, to go for a, a new adoption for a cat or a dog, this might, you know, enter the regulation by the end of 2024. And we personally think that that might be a good option, to be honest. Yeah, Alan, if, if, if I okay, can. Okay, uh, Kieran, I think we need to move on. Thank you very much sure, for your lovely. comments. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, um, Marcus asked a question about preventive health, how important it is. It is very important. If you have heard uh, all the things that our panelists have said, I'm going to move on. Uh, Stephen, are there any meaningful barriers to entry into pet insurance? Oh, well, do you want to voice over that? Stephen, are you there? Yeah, yeah sure. Very happy to do that. Um, Stephen, we always see your fingers. Oh, that's really odd. I'm not sure why that is. There we go. There you go. Oh, hey, Stephen Mendel. Uh, Many pets. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Uh, so I'm Can very you introduce yourself? Really, really, yes, sure. <laughs> I'm Stephen Mendel. I'm the CEO and one of the two co-founders of Many Pets. Uh, and I'm really embarrassed to say that I've never met Hedda, Ludo or, or Alban before. So I'm really sorry for that. So very nice to meet you all. Uh, and Kim, thank you very much for organizing this. I've found the conversation enormously, uh, enormously engaging and constructive. Thanks for joining so, us. Tell us so, question. so my question, my question is, uh, are there any meaningful barriers to entry into pet insurance or will we continually see new entrants into this marketplace? Well, um, to, be, to be honest, at Dana, we see three and we are investing at the moment in three different angles. One is the product, right? Because when you look at the industry average, we think, you know, that old school competitors they are doing a pretty you know, they, they offer a pretty bad experience, right? That's why we're investing quite a lot in our capability right now to make our claim process instant. That's just one example, but at the end of the day, the vision that we have for our product is to deliver a seamless product experience where you can claim easily, subscribe easily, and have a conversation with a vet very easily with a fully integrated experience. That's the angle number one that we have. Angle number two is about distribution. Because, and Ludo was, was saying about, was talking about this, right? That's, let's say, a huge percentage of the new subscribers, they go from aggregators, they go, they go from, let's say, Google ads, social ads, et cetera. And I'm pretty sure that you know, Stephen, that it can be super expensive and costly, right? We are investing a lot in our capability to turn vets into uh, prescriptors, basically. So we are building what we call, you know, vets direct payments. And this is a, a, a very edgy thing to build on the French market because we are the only one to do so. Because in the end, we, we think it can create, you know, both value for the end customer and for the vets because they're, they're receive their cash instantly. And the third one, and I guess it is super important in our play is the brand platform. Because, you know, when you look at the market average, our competitors, they are poorly emotional, right? And they have not understand that we are protecting like kids, not pets. That's why in our, you know, we think that we are super empathetic people and we want to translate this into the communication that we have with our, with our clients on the product. 
Um, and I guess that the third angle is, is the branding platform. Ludo, do you want to take a shot at this? Are there, are we going to have many, many people coming in to play in this field? I mean, I think it's a good thing, right? New entrants force innovation. They, they help the market move forward. Uh, you guys did a fantastic job over the past 10 years changing the industry and, and we hope to be the, to, to do the same and bring some innovation and new ideas that get more people to protect their pets. So, so that's a good thing. I think there is a buyer which is finding capacity, right? Finding an underwriter, that's, that's, that's kind of a big buyer. Regulation is not easy and then you need to come up with a good product. Um, and then in the UK, it's definitely distribution. So there's aggregators, you need to list on them. It's kind of like, uh, it, it's, 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 it's not that easy to do anymore. So I think those are the main buyers. Um, but I think what we're, we're seeing that's very interesting in the market is that there's a lot of like pet health companies uh, that are tackling a particular angle like training that are thinking, okay, like is there now an angle for me to enter insurance? Uh, so they think of insurance as a way to monetize the audience that they've built. So you can think of that from like uh, food subscription businesses, you have training businesses that have all over the past few months in the UK and in the rest of Europe started to think about whether it makes sense for them to, to enter the insurance market. Heda? I'm yeah, I think it was a gold mine for pet insurance companies. <laughs> Yeah, but I think you always need to take the consumer perspective. So are we still seeing that consumers crave different things? Of course, there's capacity in terms of, I think we all have raised money. It's hard to start uh, an insure tech company without any funding. So this is quite a long uh, way to go to get all the licenses and the regulators and start up your business. And of course, there's capacity from carriers and regulatory side. But I think you most and foremost need to look at what the consumers are craving. Are they happy with the current solutions? Are they craving more kind of holistic platforms? I think a lot of pet users, they have a, a whole wide of different apps. And I think what we are trying to look is a more of a holistic view on, on looking at the pet health. The pet insurance market is big, but it's not huge. So I think you need to look at more what does the pet parent need? Is it preventive care? Is it training? We, for example, we have our app free for everyone to use and also touching upon that subject a little bit before that dog owners and cat owners might maybe uh, not know enough to get a pet. We are trying to democratize and come with that from a vision. So I think it's really important to see that you're bringing something new uh, to the market. Otherwise, I think you, it's just going to be end up being a price competition if everyone uh, solves the same challenge in the same way. So Stephen, um, as you guys with the trailblazers, can I ask you a question? Yes. As well. I'm not quite sure that's how we think about it, but yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I think it'll be quite interesting to hear, you know, what you guys are doing, what innovation you guys are um, currently pursuing. I know that you've gone big time into the US. Um, I think you've got over half a million pets or even more uh, in your, you know, in, in, in your business. Tell us a little bit about your innovation and how you continue to stand out. So, um, so thank you, Kim, for the question. Um, I, I think that the the thing that's interesting in this whole conversation and and you know listening to the answers is that I, I worry a lot that um, that collectively, and I include us in this conversation, that collectively we end up confusing consumers. Um, my worry is that this, if there becomes a plethora, like too much choice. That consumers have no idea how to make decisions and 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 end up shutting though not making a decision at all. You know we see that when we've actually reduced the number of options that we uh, that we make available to customers because we found that conversion was was materially effect, adversely affected by increased choice. Uh, and I worry that collectively, all of us together will have that if, in fact, impact on the marketplace. Um, and, and, you know, and, and to your question, um, you know, we're doing a few different things that are in the broader pet health arena. So, um, so in the UK, we bought uh, this time last year a flea and worming treatment business, and we're integrating that into the insurance piece so that it becomes a, a more holistic uh, experience, not just about insurance, but about pet health in the kind of broader sense and we started with flea and worming treatment but we'll be expanding that um and we've tried the same thing but from a different angle in the us where we launched at this when we launched in march of last year uh, a wellness cover alongside insurance 
Uh, you can only buy the wellness cover if you already buy the insurance coverage. Uh, and the it, it, idea behind that is that if you go into a vet uh, and whatever happens, regardless of whether it's covered by the insurance policy or by the wellness cover, you, know, you make one claim with us and the answer is just yes. Um, and we're trying very hard to expand the way in which we think about insurance past the kind of traditional boundaries of insurance so that cons because cons consumers don't think about the world like that right you know as, as you've been hearing already like consumers think about their pets and their love for their pets and looking after their pets and they want the best possible outcome for their pets they don't think about insurance right like they don't think about insurance as oh well if i claim for x i'll be covered if i claim for y i won't be i'll make sure i only claim for x no that's not how they think about it at all they think about it my beloved pet needs something doing to it i'll go and do that uh, and then i'll worry about the claiming afterwards so so like hopefully those two examples of of kind of broadening out into kind of more physically physically visible flea and worming treatment and supplements and that kind of thing gives you an example of one area of expansion uh, and and wellness cover uh, in addition to insurance gives you another cover but but yes i mean to the things you've been hearing here before clearly all of us are thinking hard about the role of tech and the role of data and the role of customer service and how to how to genuinely delight customers you know this is this you should hear is consistent across all of us lovely thanks Stephen. Thank you. Thanks, so Kim. Cheers. Bye. Thanks. So I've got another question from Richard Ree. Richard, you've raised your hand. I'm going to give you priority as you you're willing to speak. Tell Thank us you. where you're from. Um, and sure. Um, your question. So uh, from the UK as well. Um, so I, I head up underwriting and pricing for uh, Purely Pets. Um, so I'm sure uh, Ludo knows about me uh, or our company at least. Um, but uh, we work for Mark Study, so we uh, do a lot of uh, through an MGA and uh, look after many uh, brands. Um, so my question is, how do we expect um, the demand for pet insurance to change over the next five years? Because, uh, you know, the likes of uh, Header have entered, entered the market over in Sweden off the back of uh, COVID and lockdowns. And obviously uh, everyone, uh, well, some people got pet because they were bored, right? And wanted some company and all of these sorts of things and also to help them through through the, the, those lockdowns. Um, so demand for uh, puppies and kittens is naturally going to reduce but then you've got more entrance to the market so there's quite a few things moving parts but also we're, we're all trying to get more people you know better penetration of uh, of people um actually wanted to cover their pets so sorry quite an extensive question but just interested to hear uh, the thoughts of people on the panel yeah i think like the last couple of years we've seen the growth being driven by two things as you mentioned the rise in number of people to get pets. There's been a huge boom in, in, of course, puppy and kitten buyers. But then also we see this trend, and that happens every year. We see this humanization of pets trend where people care more and more for their pets and thus want to insure for them. And I see given COVID, I think that number, that growth number of new pets might not be as strong as the last couple of years, but we see definitely with everything from inflation um, that the increase of penetration of pet insurance will probably grow even faster now since we can always see, for example, in Sweden, when vet care becomes more expensive, people do insure their pets more. Because before you might have been able to cover um, the, the cost out of pocket, but now when vet care becomes more expensive, it's more important to work with the digital solutions and get pet insurance because you do want to save your pet if they get a really serious um, uh, kind of sickness like cancer or something else. It's your family members, of course you want to do that. Good. Alvin, do you want to say something? Yeah, well, I mean, we observed the same thing. And and I guess the, the main thing explaining the growth, the, the market growth, is inflation. When we compare, let's say, the price of vaccines, like regular vaccines in Paris versus Stockholm versus the UK, right? You get like big, big X. It's, it's like 2X versus London, for instance. Um, so we see inflation, let's say, as a both a risk and an opportunity let's say, opportunity, because in the end, it will push the market in the right direction, right? Uh, it would push, you know, pet parents to start considering and adopting pet insurance. At the same time, and we didn't have that time to talk about loss ratio, but, you know, as insurer, right, we are really obsessed by the demand and making sure that we can grow, but let's say with high degree of efficiency. So I think it's going to be a big, big challenge for all of us to find, you know, smart ways of mitigating the loss ratio making sure that we can beat the market standard uh, here. 
I, I guess the angle that we have on preventative care is, is one super interesting angle that we all have. Uh, you, you could think of other angles like, you know, the digitalization of your of the relationship with your vet might be an angle as well. Uh, and I guess that's a big, big challenge, big challenge for, uh, for, for the team. Good. So it's always like that when you're having fun, time flies and we are one minute over time, but I'm just going to take one more minute to ask the panelists. So we've heard fantastic things. I want to hear what's next for you and what's your vision for uh, for your for your company or in general pet insurance. Hedda, can I start with you? Yeah, so our vision is super simple. We want to be there for you and be a health companion for you and your pet in your everyday life. So we are working very hard to improve on helping you to reduce injuries and be a good uh, partner in your everyday day life. So super excited about being the, the first one to give pet uh, parents rewards on their show earns for, for working preventively and very much looking forward to continue on these innovations. Because as also Alba mentioned, this is very important when you think about inflations and the loss ratios as well. Lovely. Ludo? Yeah, so so top priorities for us, I mean, our mission is, is to help people take better care of their pet and, and help their pets live healthy, happy and long lives. I think the first part is we've grown very quickly. We have uh, almost 40,000 customers. So top priorities do a great job for these customers. Uh, that, that's the number one. The second one is there's 14 million pets today that are not insured in the UK. Uh, let's continue attracting some of them to try to protect more pets and deliver more value in the marketplace. And then that's going to come through the innovation. That's going to come through creating a product that uh, delivers more value outside of just insurance, a product that people can trust, a product that has people's back. So continuing to build on top of our early successes um, and continuing to grow. Yeah. And any geographical expansion plans? Yeah, that's that's in the plan, I think, for us over the, the 12 to 18 months horizon. Okay, good. Alban? Yes, so let's say very simply on our end, uh, you know, we want the, to be the category reflect in Europe, basically. So again, we see pet insurance as a right, you know, entry point to a, a much wider and massive uh, industry called pet care, basically. So we are, you know, aggregating some other cool features directly into the app to generate more engagement and to unlock, you know, new revenue stream. That's the main vision that we have. And that's why we've invested day one with your a, you know, better relationship that we are adding become to the platform. And we want to operate in France, but we want to operate in other uh, European countries because when you look at Europe, basically lots of, let's say, similar markets uh, as, as France, you know, with low penetration rates and with, uh, you know, high growth rates within the pet insurance vertical. So, so we want to expand and we should expand in the next uh, coming months. All right, good. Any, any particular country in mind? Uh, let's say when we look at Europe, you know, the geographies that are super interesting to us is, you know, basically market with high degree of similarity with France, right? Low penetration rates, open competitive landscape, high growth rates. When, you, when I look at Europe, Germany is on the list, Spain on the list, Italy on the list, uh, Belgium or Switzerland, I would say. So that's pretty much the geography that we are aiming at. Fantastic. Heda, any, any plans to get out of Sweden where life is so beautiful? Yeah, of course. We're uh, <laughs> also hoping to announce something quite soon. Oh, good, good. We'll look out for it. So, guys, there are a lot of questions out there. Um, all our panelists are on our Slack, our Unleashed uh, Pet Tech community. You can perhaps uh, connect. If you guys are looking for partnerships, there are lots of pet startups in, in, in our community. Uh, do reach out. Um, and with that, I want to thank you all for spending this hour with us. It's been a really exciting talk. Too short, as usual. Uh, we could go on for the entire day, but all good things have to come to an end. So thank you, guys. Thank you very, very much for being with us today. Thank you, Kim. Thank, thank you thank for you. having us and great organization. Thank Bye, you. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day.